So with the economy in crisis mode and deaths continuing to soar, obviously this is all bad for President Trump's re-election hopes. And today, Trump came up with a brilliant new strategy for the election. We just don't have one. Fox News alert, some breaking news this hour, a tweet from the White House, President Trump tweeting out a short time ago on the upcoming presidential election. With universal mail-in voting, not absentee voting, which is good, 2020 will be the most inaccurate and fraudulent election in history. It will be a great embarrassment to the USA. Delay the election until people can properly, securely and safely vote. Question marks. To be very clear, the president cannot do that. The Constitution is unambiguous about this, that Congress, not a president who may have their own self-interest in mind, gets to decide when the leader of the United States is elected. And to his other point, there is no evidence, of course, of widespread voter fraud through mail-in voting, even in states with all mail-in votes. That's right. Trump isn't actually allowed to delay the election. Although not being allowed to do something has never stopped him before. Like, we'll still have the election on November 3rd, but he'll probably just add 100 days to August. And sure, maybe the court overturns it, but that might not happen until August 73rd. And I mean, this is an absurd suggestion. I know. We can't reschedule the election. For starters, both candidates are like 200 years old. I mean, we've got to keep things moving. I'm not even sure that Trump understands what an alarming proposal this is. Because this is basically the move of a dictator. But Trump is just casually throwing it out there in a tweet with a bunch of question marks. Like he's on a group text trying to bail on happy hour. Hey, y'all, November 3rd is not great for me. Maybe we reschedule for 2021. Thoughts? What do you guys think, huh? And just by the way, you remember a few years ago when I said Trump was an African dictator? You remember that? Yeah? Yeah? People acted like I was crazy. But this is how it starts. First, they just suggest that maybe you postpone the election. Then they suggest that some of the votes are not valid. And pretty soon they're saying, you know what's really unfair? That there are two political parties. Why are there two political parties? Let's just have one. Then you don't have to worry about making all these decisions anymore. America is mine. Oh, and by the way, I don't know if you remember, but three months ago, Joe Biden predicted that Trump would try to delay the election. And this is how Trump reacted back then. I never even thought of changing the date of the election. Why would I do that? November 3rd. It's a good number. Uh, now I look forward to that election, and uh, that was just made up propaganda. Oh, I love me some fake Trump outrage. How dare you? I won't sink that low for at least three more months. And just by the way, November 3rd is a good number? What does that have to do with anything? Elections aren't decided based on whether the date is a cool number. If it was, every election would be held on June 9th. Nice. But look, regardless of his insane tweets, the chances are that Trump will not be able to move the election, which means he's gonna have to come up with a plan to win it the old-fashioned way, by using racism. President Trump is facing scrutiny for his words about affordable housing and the suburbs. He made the comments while discussing the rollback of a housing rule aimed at fighting racial discrimination as Trump works to court white suburban voters. There will be no more low-income housing forced into the suburbs. I abandoned and took away and just rescinded the rule. The Obama-era rule forced local governments that receive federal housing funds to assess patterns of racial housing discrimination and submit plans to eliminate it. On Wednesday, the president tweeted, I am happy to inform all the people living their suburban lifestyle dream that you will no longer be bothered or financially hurt by having low-income housing built in your neighborhood. Your housing prices will go up based on the market and crime will go down. Enjoy. Later in Texas, the president reaffirming that message. I've seen conflict for years. It's been hell for suburbia. We rescinded the rule three days ago. So enjoy your life, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy your life. Okay, first of all, suburban lifestyle dream sounds like the world's lamest Katy Perry song. But just in case it wasn't clear, Trump is saying that he's gonna stop black people from moving into white people's neighborhood. And I mean, it's not even subtle enough to call that a dog whistle. It's too loud. It's more like a dog steel drum. I won't let the black people live near you. Now look, I don't know why having black people move into your neighborhood is a bad thing. But apparently, it's so scary, the Trump campaign has already made it into a horror movie. <laughs> they were living the dream lifestyle. 
they thought the high property values would never end. Until one day, from the team that brought you migrant caravans, comes a whole new election season fever. What happens when your street goes from suburban to urban? Keep out. This fall, the scariest N-word is neighbors. Damn, I'm black and I'm still scared.